This video is going to be talking about World War I on the home front. What was it like in the United States during World War I? Did you know that World War I changed so many things, socially, politically, and economically? Did you know that World War I is considered what we call a total war, where a country has to make everything about themselves um, change into a wartime economy. So in the United States, we had to think about the things that we're making in our factories, making sure people supported the war, thinking about how we would pay for the war, and how we would find enough stuff to send to troops. So the first thing that we did to prepare our country for war is we created the War Industries Board, and it had to be approved by Congress. At the time, the president was President Wilson. Um, so we stopped making like as many consumer goods like um, all the different food and canned goods and stuff like that and we started wa making war supplies. Also Congress gave the president, President Wilson, direct control of the U.S. economy. The War Industries Board was created in 1917 and it was led by a man named Bernard Baruch. They encouraged mass production by companies and fewer products so that the companies could increase efficiency. They also regulated the use of railroads and things like gas, oil, and coal. So they had things like gasless Sundays and lightless nights so that they could have more stuff left over. Daylight savings time also allowed for energy saving. During the wartime economy, wages rose because the prices of everything else was rising, so they needed to make up for it. Also, the big companies made a ton of money. Unions were fighting for people to have better working conditions and to stop child labor and unfair pay. And finally, because unions were so strong, Wilson created something called the National War Labor Board to settle disputes over labor. So in order to conserve food, Wilson created the Food Administration to help produce and conserve food. They wanted to encourage public conservation of food, so they had meatless, sweetless, and porkless days. They called it the gospel of the clean plate, and they also encouraged people to grow their own food in something they called victory gardens. When they did this, they were able to send a lot more food to the Allies on the front. The United States spent about $35.5 billion on the war effort. That means they had to raise a lot of money. They ended up doing that by raising about a third of it through taxes, um, where they especially taxed the rich more than the poor. Then the rest of it they raised through something called Liberty Bonds. Basically, people could buy something called a Liberty Bond, which allowed them to loan money to the U.S. government. So another part of it, getting people to support the war is getting them to believe in it. So the United States actually created the Committee on Public Information to make the war more popular. So they were literally supposed to advertise for the war. And it was headed by a guy named George Creel. And he used propaganda to convince people to support the war. Propaganda is sort of like an ad. It's supposed to make you think or believe in a certain way. Creel used lots of different tools to popularize the war. So he used artists and advertising agencies to create paintings, posters, cartoons, and sculptures to promote the war. He also recruited people to speak out about um, topics relating to the war, things like the draft, rationing food, um, bond drives, victory gardens, and topics like why we're fighting. And he also printed lots of newspaper ads to popularize the war. With many things where people become afraid, there was a lot of anti-immigrant feelings, especially against people from Germany or Austria, because those were the people we were fighting against in World War I. So people were being attacked. There was also a lot of like anti-German stuff where they didn't want to see German culture, like their music, language, or literature. Those were being banned. The government passed something called the Espionage and Sedition Acts, where a person could be fined or imprisoned for interfering with the war effort in any way, such as speaking against the government. It was a violation of the First Amendment, which promises freedom of speech. 
They prosecuted loosely defined on anti-war activities, but it especially targeted socialists and labor leaders, people who were in unions because they were suspected of being socialists. For African Americans, the war created social change. Many of them joined the war and supported the war efforts, even though some believed that victims of racism should not support a racist government. Besides joining the war, there was something called the Great Migration where many African Americans began moving north to take the jobs that were left behind by soldiers who had gone to war. However, the problem was that as there was this huge, huge migration up north, there was a lot more racism up north in reaction to the new immigrants. Women also helped greatly in the war effort. Many of them took jobs in the heavy industry previously held by men. For the first time ever, women were leaving their homes and taking jobs. Many of them also volunteered for the war effort. They canned, they grew victory gardens. Some were active in the peace movement like the Women's Peace Party that was founded in 1915. But the biggest result was that women got the right to vote. Because of the war, more people supported suffrage and the 19th Amendment passed. To summarize, the video has been about how the United States mobilized for total war during World War I. We controlled the economy through the War Industries Board, the Food Administration, and financed the war by raising victory bonds and also raising taxes. We got people to support the war through creating propaganda through the Committee on Public Information. People were very anti-immigrant, and also we discussed the role of women and African Americans in the war.